Hello there, and welcome to Women's Business. My name is Dr. Mary Michelle Smith, known to most as Dr. Daycare. I would like to welcome you to our mentoring program designed to educating our community on issues facing working women. We'll be speaking to our guests in the area of arts, science, finance, education, law, medicine, politics, and of course, all about women's business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experiences and pass this information down to our own daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content will relate to the guest's journey and their chosen profession, what they learned most about the process, and what they wish they knew before they began the process, because this journey is a process. Since women own business is the fastest growing sector in our economy, our guests will close what they would pass on to our listening audience. Today, I am privileged to have Stephanie Morrow and Alexandra Tabio. How are you? Good. How are you? Very, very good. <laughs> and the most interesting part of the day is they both are employed at Dr. Daycare. So I guess I could say you both work for me, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. This is amazing. And we're going to talk a little bit about friendship because you've been friends since high school. And I, I really need to tell you. I say this every time I train high school students, and I do a lot of training with different people, and I always say to them at the end of my uh, speech, so I'll say at the very beginning of my training, begin the show, attend your class reunion. I have been on my class reunion since 1970, 75 was our first reunion. It's the best thing in the world. Leave all that high school stuff behind you, who you liked, who you didn't like, because as life goes on and you go back to all your class reunions, I am telling you, it's one of the best. We had ours last August at the Marriott in Providence, and it was, it, I guess can't tell you, friendships, that they saw you when you had your hair all curled or uncurled, <laughs> when you wore that crazy thing to school and don't know why you wrote it or why mm -hmm. you were crying in the ladies' room, the, the woman, girls' room. Honest to God, if you want to, I can only suggest you go to your class reunions. It's, it's just an amazing event. And forget all that stuff you left behind. Grow up and keep going forward. That's right. So anyhow, <laughs> we have two women here who have been friends from school. Mm -hmm. and in my understanding, as the administrator of Dr. Daycare Smithville, and you working in a classroom in Smithville, yes. so we had friends working together. Yes, we did. That's yeah. pretty interesting. <laughs> so um, I've had friends throughout the years work for me, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested to say how you got the job, because I know Steph was there before you. Right. Um, well, I was living in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I was planning on moving back to Rhode Island, and I was just having a little trouble finding a job and how am I going to get back on my feet um, being a single mom. So, of course, my best friend came in, and she said, well, I can help you. We have some openings. If you like to apply, we can definitely see how it goes. Now, that's friendship. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> friendship. Put it right out there, and what if you got the power of girls' friendship amazing, <laughs> amazing. So, and and then you applied to Dr. Daycare with a fantastic reference. Yes. And now, let's say that you are now working in the home office, yes. doing a lot of fi talk about finance, doing a lot of finance. Yes, doing Absolute, a lot of finance. Yes. <laughs> a whole new component of the position, the profession of child care. Right. Where you're in the classroom with the children. Yes. Now you're Collect, figuring out how we collect the money and doing all those, and you got an absolutely wonderful, wonderful mentor, Stephanie Lobes. Absolutely. Been for over 10 years. She knows more about child care and the industry and the finances when it comes to Department of Human Services, and you're going to learn a lot from her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me, how did you meet in high school? Um, well, I believe uh, it started in history class. <laughs> see, see, I'm telling you, when you go back to those reunions, you're going to say, remember English class? Yep. When you told me to put my arm over you and you could read the, my answers. <laughs> That's how I met my first husband. He tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, could you move your arm over a little bit? He goes, I really need to read that English test. Let's <laughs> not go any further than that, okay? <laughs> okay, be that as a man, God, tell yep. me history. <laughs> so uh, I believe it was history class, and um, we had a major project to do about an American business, oh. and we just decided to be partners in our presentation, oh. and we ended up doing it on Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Wow, Vermont. <laughs> yes. Been there a few times. <laughs> No, they were two friends that met in college, too, weren't they? I, I think so, they, yeah. yeah. I remember when I've been there a few times, and I've heard the history on Ben & Jerry's. Very interesting concept, and it yes. continues to go on. And um, Rebecca's um, brother-in-law works at Ben & Jerry's. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's <laughs> one of the biggest um, employers in the Vermont area. Oh, that's absolutely. great. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. So, and I also want to say for education, education has come a long way. To put students and groups together, working together, 
build these relationships. Oh, yes. You absolutely. know, you would probably sit in a classroom and, all, you know, put your feet on the floor, look at the teacher, have talk, and also one day they pair you up two, three other people, and you realize what the connections made there. And a lot of the colleges are going that direction. They're doing clusters of people. Mm -hmm. When I graduated college at my doctorate in 1995 with the cluster to this day, to this day, that cluster of women all hang out together. Oh, And wonderful. if I have a question about early childhood in Connecticut, I just email my friend in Connecticut and um, Massachusetts. They, they bring me all the information. So those types of relationships you build in education are absolutely amazing. Absolutely. So who was the first one who said, hey, you want to, you know, Saturday night do something together? How'd you make that out? I don't, know, just, I don't even know. <laughs> it just, just kind of happened. It just kind of happened. Yeah. 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 We, um, we moved on to select choir together, so we had a whole oh, group of us that um, still wow. keep in touch, you know, today, um, that we all used to sing together, and, you know, we went to competitions and things like that. Was that at school, too, high school? Yeah. Yes. Really? What high school did you go to? We went to Byerville. I knew that. Yeah. I yeah. say. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we graduated, and... Then we kind of went our separate ways as far as school for a little while and that sort of thing, but always kept in touch. And, and then she moved back, wow. and it's been great. So wow. and you said you worked together too at the supermarket. Yes. Yes, at Stop and Shop. A stop and Shop. Yes. Wow. We kind of follow each other. So if she leaves me, I got to I, <laughs> <laughs> I make a sign some of a contract. Lexi stays. <laughs> you tend to follow each other. <laughs> Boy, go and go. Yeah. Um, and how does it feel to have a friend who you probably on a Saturday night go out to have a couple of drinks with, talk with, have fun with, tell your personal life to, we all have those girlfriends and, and friends. How do you feel about her at, at one time you know, being your boss? Uh, I had no problem with it, probably only, only because, um, you know, we had that history from working at Stop and Shop yep. and, um, you know, everything, she, she's a great boss. I mean, everything was always followed by policy yeah. and always everything. I could just go to her for anything I needed. She would give me advice. She'd uh, mentor me in some things. And that's what made it easier for the transition at Dr. Daycare, especially because it was a field that I didn't have that much experience in. Yes. So she was able to show me some of her ways. <laughs> that's a good friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other thing, too, I like what you just said, Lexi, is policy and procedure. Yes. So, in other words, it's not like I'm making you do this, and this is what I say. The bottom of the policy is this is how we work with children. If no, I'm not saying this ever happened, but the other people who want to work with friends, and that, that certainly can happen, that if you're punching late three or four times a week and you have to have that conversation, it's always great to build the policy of the business stage you need to be here on time. Right. So it takes away all that connection for, for friendship in many ways. Right. So, yeah. I like to say because it, it can work. People can work together. Relatives can work together. It's all the way you actually perceive it, and you two perceive it pretty well. Thank yeah. you. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and how is it, it is being a director of a child care facility, or the new word administrator, excuse me? Um, I have learned so much. I started my career in early childhood as a toddler lead teacher in a tiny little center out in Connecticut. And I, you know, working at Dr. Daycare, I've just learned so many things that I could have done differently back when I was a teacher in the field. But for me, it's a really great... Um, combination of what I've learned in the customer service fields, absolutely, yeah, um, along with the early childhood field. So I really feel like it's where I want to be. Um, I get to plan a lot of events and do marketing and create family engagement opportunities, which is is really rewarding and that sort of thing. So it, it's definitely always busy and every day is different. But uh, you know, I just I like coming to work every day, which is yeah. nice. That's what's nice to hear. And the other thing too is the experience of working in a classroom. And then actually working in the office end of it, the administration of it, you actually can empathize with the people in the classroom. Absolutely. You know there's going to be like a couple extra smelly drapers that day. And you know what that's like. Right. Also a child who does not want to take a nap. Also a child that you just spend so much time because you want to spend more time hugging and nurturing them. Well, actually teach them an extra put a, the puzzle together. So sure. you, when cause you walk in that classroom and you ask them to do something, they're like, hey, you, you get it. If no one had that experience, they would not get it. Right. So yes. I'm going to ask you both the question. I've been doing early child for 43 years since Keith was born. What do you think is my favorite age group? This is not, you're not going to get mocked on this test. I'm just. <laughs> Preschool. Preschool. Mm, I say toddlers. Okay. What do I act like? <laughs> Come on, answer it. How often do you like, tell the boss? I feel like you act like you love them all. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I meant what, what age group do I act like? Oh. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you act like a toddler, so no. No, you're not like a toddler. <laughs> I'm going to say.
preschool? <laughs> I find it's definitely toddler. Okay. It's because I'm all over the place like a toddler. I, <laughs> sometimes I'm a toddler, I gotta go back in that classroom and watch them all over the place doing all those different things, multi multitasking as toddlers do. So I always say, yeah. And somewhere in my heart, I don't know how it happened, but I'm a toddler. Uh -huh. <laughs> I maybe I was stuck in toilet training. I do not know that. However, I always find myself in the toddler room. <laughs> it's a, um, it's, I love them all. They're the great <laughs> ages I do. Um, however, toddlers, you got that specialty. I can't explain it. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Such a unique age group. Very. So much yes, yes. goes on during that 18 to 36 month range. I did a parent meeting last night to our new facility in um, Dr. Daycare, Pawtucket, Thornley Street, former um, Pawtucket Day, which I want to say. They had the first license in the state of Rhode Island, Pawtucket Day on Thornley Street. Wow. Um, had the very first child care license in the state of Rhode Island. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That is good. And we did a parent meeting last night, and it was so beautiful to hear the parents. They kind of had a conversation with Amy and Steph and me and Ron afterwards. One parent came up and said, um, my daughter's 17 months old, and I, I want her in the toddler room. And, uh, she said, and, and even the director said, the administrator said, she's a very advanced little girl. And I said, well, state law dictates that we have to have a toddler room. And uh, he's like, oh, I thought you could just put your child in any classroom you want. I said, oh, no, we have infants, mm -hmm. toddlers, preschool, and school age. But at that point, I said, I'll go in and work with the teachers so I can make sure your daughter's getting, you know, extra puzzles, different things. He's like, and that's why you call this place Dr. Daycare. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I think as you just said, Steph, it's meeting, the, meeting what the parents really need. Because I haven't met a parent in my entire life who doesn't really care so much about their child absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. what is one of the things that you learned as an administrator that you didn't think would happen in a, a daycare director's office i just think all of the behind the scenes that you don't realize as far as you know, roofs caving in <laughs> yeah things like that yeah. but definitely all of the inner workings of planning a, a curriculum yeah. assessing children on their development um, and i think one of the things that i've learned is um, communicating with parents. Yes. Um, it can. It's not always the most pleasant conversation when you know a parent has a concern about their child or something that happens at the center. But dealing with that in an appropriate way and making sure that everyone leaves feeling like there's a solution. Yep. There's a solution they've been communicated to. They've been listened to. And the most important part of it is the whole conversation is their child. Now tell me what it was like working in a toddler room. Um, well, I was working in the, the preschool room. Oh, preschool. Yes, Sorry, um, yeah. the preschool room. Um, it was very, very entertaining. Um, before then, I was a nanny in North Carolina. Oh. And I had a toddler and a preschooler along with my own toddler. Sure. So um, just seeing the interactions between the two of them, it was, it was really mm -hmm. very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And um, planning activities for the preschooler definitely gave me the insight to help plan activities for the preschoolers at Dr. Daycare. Yes. So it was, um, and each of one of them had their very own personality. Yeah. And that's helped, that helped develop some really good activities for them. Now I'm going to go for a little bit. Of, what was it like to be a nanny? It was, I loved it. Did you? Yes, I did. I'm going to ask this question and please answer it from your heart. Was it isolating? No. Good to know. No, to know. At, not at all, because I was able to take them out. We would go to the parks, we'd go to the museums. I would take them to the country club and the pool, and we would. And uh, there was another nanny in the neighborhood, and we would meet up and go to the Absolutely. playground together. So you really made it work, yes. which is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. I did home day, daycare for many, many, many years, and I look back in my, in my 20s, and it's, I look back, it was pretty isolating. It really was. You know, so I think maybe, thought maybe nanny service was somewhat the same thing. But that's pretty cool. I mean, if you can, you can get a nanny to come to your house, and it makes it a lot easier. And I'm a child care owner. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes it a lot easier on a lot of the parents, too. Oh, yes. Because um, so, certainly the price is probably twice as much. But it, the, sometimes the parents can just get up and at the ease, get into their day. Type Absolutely. Of yeah. Um, if you could change one thing in your years, you know, not many years, but years of doing business, what would that be? Um, definitely, I would start investing. Investing, uh, yes, wow. Yes, investing. Oh, Christina that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was a great um, um, show before you. She really was. She yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, she was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, that was def That's definitely one thing I would like to go back and change, um, you know, making some of those those last minute decisions and those little, you know, trips that, oh, maybe I shouldn't have, you know, taken or just maybe I should have put that money towards something else. Well, I think she did say too, which makes sense, go right into your employer immediately, the 401k, 
and uh, have it taken right out of your paycheck. Like you said, you don't even see it, which is great, you know, which is fantastic. And you know where to go. It's the next office over for um, you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not happening. You can start it next paycheck. Right. <laughs> How about you, Steph? Anything? I definitely agree with Alexandria as far as, you know, kind of looking towards, you know, making sure you're financially secure and that sort of thing. Because um, unexpected bills can certainly pop up and that sort of thing. And then mm -hmm. you're like, oh, what do you do now? Yeah. Um, so, so that sort of thing. And then I think um, gaining confidence in, in being a leader um, Absolutely, and that yeah. sort of thing as yeah. far as, you know, creating that team um, of employees and, and that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely learned a lot from my boss um, as far as that goes. And, and she's been a great mentor for me. Yeah, she is. And very, very good woman, too. <laughs> I just want to introduce Egna for one moment, and he is our educational guarantee. So Egna shows up on all the shows. He travels all over the world with me. He hasn't been to 64 countries, but uh, he's been around the world, and um, he's our mascot for Dr. Daycare. And in that little bit of a transition, I, if you could, Steph, we'll talk about two and a half years ago, your whole life just turned around. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I had been having some stomach problems and that sort of thing, lots of pain and bloating and things like that. Um, that was kind of causing a little bit of concern, but got to the point where my boyfriend, now fiance, um, said to me, like, you really need to go to the doctor. And you know, like most women, I was like, oh, I don't have time for that, that um, sort of thing. I get that. So I ended up going to my primary care physician. She, you know, examined me, that sort of thing. And she was like, you need to go and get an ultrasound right now. Like not tomorrow, right now. So she that scare you when she said right now? I was terrified. It was two days before the 4th of July. Oh, wow. Um, and so I, I, I'm driving to this place to get an ultrasound. I'm on the phone with my mom. I'm crying. I don't know what's happening. Yes. So, um, you know, I thought it would be chalked up to some kind of, you know, s stomach inflammation or an intolerance Absolutely. or that sort of thing. So I went and got an ultrasound, and they found a big mess in my stomach. Um, so, of course, all these things go through your mind and you're like, what is it? That sort of thing. Um, I ended up having to have a scan done and um, the mass was actually um, an eight pound tumor wow. um, that I had to have removed. They thought it was an ovarian cyst, which is super common. Typically, the bigger they are, the less chance yep. that it's anything. Um, so I um, went and had it removed. It was my first time being under, an under anesthesia, having any sort of surgery. I was terrified. Absolutely. What so, a way to begin. Yes. Um, so I went to the wonderful um, oncology department at Women and in Infants. Um, they did the surgery. Um, woke up from the surgery and I could just tell by the look on my mom's face, my boyfriend's face, that something wasn't right. Um, so they said while they were in there, they removed the tumor and on my ovary there was a little tiny implant. Yeah. tiniest little thing that just kind of came right off um, and that they were concerned that that could be something. Um, so before I knew it, I had fertility doctors, I had all these surgeons all in my hospital room, kind of like next steps, that sort of thing, you need to go here, you need to go there, that sort of thing. Um, so they did a biopsy on that small implant and it was stage 1C ovarian cancer. Um, so here I am in my, you know, I was only 23 at the time. Um, my world is rocked kind of thing. Wow. So um, what they suggested was you could make the decision to, to harvest your eggs and, and save them, go f through fertility treatments I and things like that. I didn't realize that, wow. Um, Lots of decisions going on here. Yes, especially when you're not even at the point to make those <laughs> yes. decisions. Yeah, absolutely, um, good point. So we actually decided not to um, harvest any of the eggs um, because my body was already in such bad shape that I didn't want to put it through all of that. I would yeah. have had to have a, have a blood transfusion, that sort of thing. Um, so that was definitely a challenging decision. Um, but then I needed to go back in for another surgery to have the other ovary removed. Um, so that put me into surgical menopause, um, a whole other slew of issues. And then after that, I had to go through three cycles of chemo. Um, the great thing is they found it early on. Yes. So if I hadn't had that big mass in my stomach that was mm -hmm. nothing, then they wouldn't have found that. Was the mass related to the cancer, or were they two separate things? So the, the tumor in my stomach was what's called a borderline tumor. Okay. So it's not quite cancer yet, but if chances are if I had left it there, it could have it turned into cancer. Yes, got it. Um, so it was one of those, you know, you thank your lucky stars and, um, you know, that you had the mass there to begin with to find, you know, the cancer and that Absolutely. sort of thing. Yeah. It sounds like you had a huge amount of support from your mom, your finance, yeah, boyfriend at the time now, your fiance. Absolutely. And there's friends and 
South Carolina, was it? North, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, yes. many uh, conversations over, over Facebook and text and that sort of thing. Um, you know, just to, it, we were kind of at a point where we weren't talking as often and that kind of brought us closer oh, together. So, yes. you know, she found out she was pregnant and I found out I had cancer and we were kind of oh. going through two completely different life-changing experiences at the same wow, time. Wow, as friends, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's the ultimate of sharing. Absolutely. The yes. sharing friendship. Absolutely. Yes. You had mentioned earlier about how social media really helped you through the um, recovery period of yes. this whole process. Yes, absolutely. So I was out of work for about eight months. Um, and of course, during that time, you can only watch so much TV and that sort of thing. <laughs> yes. So um, one of my challenges was you know, going to get chemo. Um, you would go into the infusion center, and everyone around you would be you know, women 50 and older. Yes. You didn't really have anyone to talk to. Yep. So I was able to connect with so many wow. ovarian cancer survivors, people going through it at the time, um, around my age. So I had people that understood exactly what I was going through. And they're people I still keep in contact with the, to this day. Um, some of them are a little more local than others. Um, and now, you know, as I kind of go through my next stage where I'm looking at um, possible, you know, adoption and things like that, mm -hmm. I'm finding more people that are in the same boat that I am. So um, it, it's super helpful. I know people say, you know, stay away from Google when you're sick and that sort of thing. Um, but for me, what I found on Google led to all these great platforms for me to be able to connect with people that, that truly, truly helped me mm -hmm. keep my spirits up. Mm -hmm. um, even just ask someone, is this normal? Is this not normal? You know, should I do this? What should I be doing here? That sort of thing. It was. And you're actually, you know, going through ovarian cancer, but you're also talking to a group of your peers. Absolutely. Who are your, your age, who understand this, who are probably right. a lot of them in the same exact situation as Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So I always said the power of the internet is amazing. I, yes. I, it's, it's amazing what you can bring people together and answer lots of questions. And people you don't even know who they are can answer the question that you might have in life or have just lived that situation. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it also makes it so much easier because when you're behind that computer screen, you're not afraid to type, you know, certain things or That's right. you can yes. be brutally honest and, yes. and there's no judgment in that sort of thing. Uh, that's so. a very good point you said, yeah. <laughs> that when you're behind the, the good old keyboard, mm -hmm. you can put it right out there. Absolutely. There is yes. no judgment, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, my God, thank you for very much sharing on uh, your experience, especially as a young woman. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. How are you healing today? I am great. Um, I go every six months to women and infants for a checkup. They yep. check my, um, my uh, they do a blood test to check my levels and that sort of thing. And as long as I am feeling good and they, you know, they do an exam, everything's good, then I have another six months of freedom before I go back again. Wow. But those doctors are top notch. I would recommend them yes, to anyone. They are. Um, We're they very are, lucky in Rhode Island. Wonderful. We are very lucky. We have top yes. notch yes. doctors. Maybe someday you can get one to come on his business. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely. Wow, that'd be like too good to be true. I could Absolutely. feel it happening. Wow. <laughs> so my two friends here, uh, how do you balance it all? I mean, you had to balance cancer. You had to balance a job, a boyfriend, family, <laughs> friends out of state. How'd you balance it all? Got a few minutes. Um, I think just staying positive and just moving forward. Not you know. Some people kind of go into a depression when they go through things yeah. like that. I chose to just move forward, stay positive, and just be thankful for every day that you have here because you just never know. So yeah. I think just, just moving forward. Moving forward is a very, very, very good point, yes. And staying positive is whole is a big, huge piece of it, you know. And um, staying connected. You still have Absolutely. your um, people online mm -hmm. that you stay connected with this day, too. Fantastic. How about you, Alexi? How do you balance? So you got a baby. I do. I have a. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have a toddler, yes. and um, I actually I just finished uh, my bachelor's degree while raising her. So that I felt that was a, a big accomplishment, and you know it wasn't easy. So I did have some struggles with um, balancing working full time, going to school, taking classes, and raising a, a toddler. Let's talk about that a little bit. We got a couple of minutes left. Mm -hmm. So, what made you think of going to school after? High, how long have you been out of high school, ladies? Um, it'll be ten years next year. Yeah, okay. I was out ten yeah. years when I went back. I yep. married my high school prom date and then went back to <laughs> school ten years later. So, that must be the kind of the golden number for a lot right. of people. So, uh, why did you decide? So, I was going to school at Rhode Island College um, for a few years, part time, yep. and then I just didn't really know what I wanted to do. Yep. Um, I just had so many options that I could go with, uh -huh. so I was just finding the right one. Yeah. So I ended up moving um, to West Virginia, 
found something that I was very passionate about, which was environmental science. Ooh. And I ended up moving to North Carolina to go to North Carolina State University. Cool. But that is when I found out I was pregnant. So okay. I decided to take some time off, go to work, yeah. um, save up some money, and then I decided to continue my education at Southern New Hampshire University. Oh, yeah. And um, I finished my bachelor's degree. Congratulations. Thank That's you. amazing. Being a mom, working, have a good friend, yes. and you finished a bachelor's degree. Yes. But, you know, I really want to say that's like, kind of like Edgar's all about. We have not dressed up in this uh, graduation outfit mm -hmm. just to let kids know they can graduate, graduate, graduate. Absolutely. And your story yes. is a perfect example of that. Yes. You have a child, you're working full time, and you still just choose to go to college because yes. guess what? It, three more credits, three more credits, three more credits. And it took me 15 years, but at least then you have a degree. Yes. You know, you, it will happen. Yep. Back in my day, I'm aging myself. We used to take ceramics. I gave up my ceramics class <laughs> and took a course at CCRI. <laughs> <laughs> and what we thought someday it would be 15 years ago all the way to a doctorate degree. So did bachelor's degree, fantastic. Master's degree, yeah, you know, keep it going. Keep Absolutely. some education. That's peace, too, very much. So we're going to finish up. We've got another minute left. Is there any lesson learned you would like to pass on to all the people out there watching the show today? Um, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Wow. Don't let them bring you down. Just stay positive. Um, just believe in yourself because you have all the power to change your life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's some pretty cool advice. Yeah. I think just make sure that you're you're confident, um, you know, stand true to what you believe in and um, certainly use your life experiences to help others. And the lesson I would like to pass on is hire wonderful people like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. Thank like you. Like you, Stephanie, Thank this you. is a pretty cool show. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you And once again, us. I know you have lots of choices where you could work. Thank you very, very much for choosing Dr. Daycare. It's pretty Thank cool. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.